Just in time for Black History Month, we're honoring the tireless work of the Urban League of Hampton Roads. The local affiliate is part of the nation's oldest and largest community-based movement meant to empower African Americans. Here to tell us more about their large number of programming is President and CEO Gil Bland. Thanks for being here today, Gil. Thank you for uh, for having the opportunity. Well, I mean, there's so much that y'all do here in Hampton Roads to help the community. Let's start. Just touch on the four pillars. Oh. Well, first, let me just say uh, thank you to Wavy TV for uh, honoring Black History Month. I mean, what a wonderful uh, time to pause during the month of February to celebrate uh, 400 plus years of contributions of the black uh, community to America. Of course. I mean, and there's every, a lot of history in every here. facet and, and endeavor. And there's a lot of history just right here in Hampton Roads itself. Uh, it began here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So talk to us about the four pillars of the Urban League. Well, uh, first, uh, Urban League is one of, the, as you said, one of the oldest uh, in the nation. We began over a century ago in 1910 in New York City, uh, the National Urban League, and we now have 93 affiliates across the nation. Uh, we focus on four major pillars, housing, health care, education, and, uh, and health. And under that, we have a number of programs I'd love to, to share with the audience. One thing I wanted to ask about was obviously, especially with the pandemic, a lot of local organizations had to change programming and figure out how to now address this new big need. So what, how did the health programming you guys had change and now what are you guys, what does it mainly do to serve the community? COVID was, uh, was frankly uh, devastating in so many ways and it accentuated and uh, amplified uh, so many problems in disadvantaged communities. But, uh, you know, first of all, it, it was a health uh, scare. And in that regard, uh, the Urban League teamed up uh, with a number of health organizations, uh, the Virginia Department of Health, uh, Centera, and we had an outreach where we, uh, we uh, did a number of things. We got involved in trying to encourage uh, COVID testing. Uh, there was a lot of uh, testing hesitancy uh, with COVID, and we developed partnerships with the faith-based community as a bridge because we borrowed against their trust in the community. Uh, I believe that saved lives. Uh, as the uh, vaccination uh, continued to evolve, uh, we got involved with uh, actually vaccinations and, uh, you know, passed the testing yeah. stage. And again, you know, challenges, but, you know, I joined with pastors. We were actually videotaped to say it's okay. Uh, we understand the historical uh, concerns, some of which are real, uh, some of which uh, uh, no longer exist and uh, we work to, uh, to build trust. I'm talking about some of the other programs here because you guys got a lot you do out here. <laughs> they do a lot of programming. So let's talk about education. So what is, when somebody comes to you guys looking for help, what does that look like? What resources are there? Well, we borrow uh, a National Urban League program called Project Ready. It targets uh, youth from 12 to 19 and frankly, we're trying to uh, make them career ready, uh, college ready and life ready and we work with them in a number of things. We also uh, added to that this fall, a program with the governor of Virginia and, and the secretary of education, where we created a, a historical collaboration with HBCUs across the Commonwealth, uh, Virginia Union, Virginia State, Hampton University and Norfolk State University. And in the six uh, major urban core cities of Richmond, Petersburg, Newport News, Hampton, Norfolk and Portsmouth, uh, we developed a tutoring mentoring program where HBCU students will tutor students in high schools and middle schools in those uh, six core areas. The pandemic um, really accentuated a learning loss yes. uh, on children who were least able to afford a learning loss and we're trying to, to bridge that gap. Yeah, I we're all already running out of time. We have a <laughs> lot we can, more we can talk about here, but just what's the main message you want people in the community to know here? Well, we provide a number of programs, uh, and they're all free. I mean, for example, in workforce, we work with the Hampton Roads Workforce Council uh, under the Good Jobs Challenge Grant, and we're trying to prepare and develop and diversify the uh, employment pipeline for the maritime industry. Uh, we do a number of things in the housing industry, and uh, we would love to have the support of the community. All right, well, perfect. And I'll ULHR. have- ULHR.org. I was literally about to plug that. <laughs> is an opportunity to donate for $50 to become a member or you become a member of our guild, which are 40 plus in age, 
for the uh, young professionals, which is uh, 40 under. Plenty of ways to help and plenty of ways to get help. Thank you for being here today, Gil. Thank, and you, thank for you for giving us the opportunity to talk. Hey, of course. All right, and I'll have more Great. information. Thank you, and we'll have more information on wavy.com as well. Stay with us. We'll get another check of your forecast with meteorologist Steve Pundero and then Nathan Epstein has the sports wrap.